Emily starts her new role as Mercy's long friend who is looking for her friend and her baby. She wears fancy clothes and jewelry. She learns about the Otamira family business and history. She meets Sarah. Lo and behold, the family she is about to enter is not just any family. It's Michael's family. The guy she met at I see you my heart, baby. A lady of all man's dreams. You be the one way they make me. Hey guys. Hmm. A surprising event is about to shake the wealthy and powerful Otamira family. Someone was coming to town, pretending to be someone they weren't. Emily is ready to do something to save her father. Who is Emily? What has she done? Before we dive into the details, please take a moment and like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. Now, let's get into it. Emily is a beautiful and talented young woman. She works as a waitress in a restaurant. Emily's dream of becoming an actress someday, but she came from a very humble and poor background. Her mom is late and her only surviving parents, her dad, is out of job because of his health. Emily was left to cater for herself and her father. She wants to be famous and make people happy with her performance. Emily's father, John, is a kind and supportive man. He encourages Emily to follow her dreams. He tells her, Emily, you are talented and smart. You can achieve anything you want. One day, Emily's father, John, collapsed and he was rushed to the hospital. The doctor announced the worst news to Emily. Your father's heart is weak and needs a surgery, which costs a lot of money. Emily was so sad. She didn't want to lose her father since he is the only surviving parent she has and there is no way she could get the money they were telling her. Emily's friend Lizzie suggested an elite dinner party in the town where all the rich men comes to party, a mask party. She suggested that Emily dress up for them to go to the party. Maybe Emily will meet a rich man who is willing to help with her father's hospital bill. Emily gave it a long thought and decided to give it a trial. She wore her best dress, dressed up with her mask and makeup, and she went off to the party. That night, Emily was having her drink when Michael walked up to her. Michael is a handsome and charming young man. He is the son of Sarah, a wealthy businesswoman in their community. Emily knows Michael, but Michael doesn't know her and is a mask party. Emily and Michael danced and talked. They feel a very strong connection though they couldn't see each other's face as they all wear masks. But Emily knows Michael since his family is influential. She said a small prayer, thanking God for connecting her to Michael. Maybe Michael will help her out, she thought to herself. Michael, I feel like I've known you my whole life. You are so easy to talk to. I know what you mean, Emily. I feel the same way. You are beautiful and smart. Thank you, Michael. You are very kind. As they talk, Emily learns that Michael is engaged to a lady named Sophia. She felt a little sad, but she maintained her composure. Sophia is a beautiful woman, but she's not nice at all. She is mean and selfish. Emily feels sorry for Michael. As the party went on, Emily realized she couldn't lead Michael on especially after knowing he has a girlfriend. Heartbroken, he ran away from the party. Without sharing her details, she went home. Michael searched and couldn't find her. Who is this mysterious woman that couldn't even give me her number? He said to himself, is she a ghost? I didn't even get to see her face. What has she done to me that I can't even stop thinking about her? Emily, now settled at home, tried to forget about Michael, but she couldn't. 
She thinks about him all the time. She wonders if he's happy with Sophia and also wonder what her life would be like with Michael. Well, she said all these thoughts doesn't matter. He has a girlfriend, but how will she raise money for her father's hospital bill? One beautiful day, as Emily was working in the hotel, she met James, a very wealthy businessman who comes to the restaurant where Emily works often. He is charming and confident. He tells Emily that he is looking for someone to help him with a special project. Emily, I've been watching you. You are smart and talented. I need someone like you to help me with a project. What kind of project? I will tell you all about it if you come to my office tomorrow. Emily was curious. She agrees to meet James at his office. The next day, Emily goes to James' office. He tells her that he needs someone to pretend to be Mercy's friends from college and infiltrate a home where Mercy grew up. His objective was to find Mercy as she disappeared into thin air with a baby years ago. Emily looked at him and asked who Mercy is to him and why he wanted that. James established that Mercy used to be his long lost girlfriend and a little bit told him that Mercy was pregnant with his child when she left him and never returned. So if there is any chance the child is alive and is living somewhere, he is willing to search for him and reunite with him or her. James wants Emily to help him find his child who was born before Mercy disappeared. Emily, I will pay you a lot of money if you help me and I will make sure your father's medical bills are taken care of. I, I, I don't know James, this sounds crazy and dangerous. Don't worry Emily, I will take care of you, you will be safe. Emily was hesitant but she agrees to help James. She doesn't know what she's getting herself into. At least she gets money to treat her father. At this point, she is willing to do anything. She accepted and take up the role. Emily starts her new role as Mercy's long friend who is looking for her friend and her baby. She wears fancy clothes and jewelry. She learns about the Otamira family business and history. She meets Sarah. Lo and behold, the family she is about to enter is not just any family. It's Michael's family, the guy she met at the dinner who has a fiancé and Sarah is Michael's mother. She also met Sophia, Michael's fiancé. So it happened that Mercy, whom she is looking for, is Sarah's sister, that's Michael's auntie. Sarah was cold and distant. Sophia was mean and completely rude. Emily tried to stay focused on her mission. She wants to find James' child, get the money, and help her father's medical bill. Emily settled into the home as she posed as a millionaire daughter from Clariton family who has come from afar to see her supposed friend Mercy. They welcomed her and gave her a room, though they told her Mercy left a long time ago and never returned and no one has ever heard from her. One day, during family dinner, Emily sees Michael. He looks at her with suspicion. Emily tries to avoid him, but he follows her outside. Who are you? Why do you look so familiar? Have we met before? Are you really my auntie's friend? I don't really think I believe you, kind of. Your voice, I, I, I think I have heard that before. Emily was so nervous that maybe Michael was about to recognize her from the party before. But she maintained her composure. I don't know what you are talking about, Michael. How dare you call me a liar? I'm telling the truth, Michael. I'm just trying to see my friend Mercy and maybe her child too. Cause Mercy told me she was pregnant. If you call me a liar one more time, I will leave this house and you will have my father to contend with. I don't know what you are talking about, but I know you are lying. Just don't bring trouble to my family. Leave my family alone. I'm not bringing any trouble if your family doesn't have trouble. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. 
Michael, please, just trust me. Michael looks at her with doubt. Emily knows she has to be careful. She can't let Michael discover her through identity. Emily gently continues her search for James' child or any information that could lead her to his child. She couldn't wait to get that done and get out of the trap. One day, during family lunch, she goes through Mercy's old room and finds a hidden diary. The diary reveals a shocking secret. Mercy was in love with James, but Sarah, Michael's mother, which is her older sister, didn't approve of the love. Emily realized that Mercy's disappearance is connected to the family's dark secret, but she has no idea what that was. She decides to investigate further. One night, Emily sneaks into the Altamira family archive. She finds a file labeled Mercy's case. As she reads through it, she discovers a surprising truth. Emily says to herself, Oh my gosh, Mercy actually had a child with James. So this child exists and her older sister Sarah knew about it. So what happened to the child? And more so, where is Mercy? Just then, Emily hears a noise behind her. She turns around to see Michael standing in the doorway. Emily, what are you doing here? You are not supposed to be in this room. I was just looking for something. I didn't mean to snoop. You are lying again. I don't trust you. Emily tries to think fast. She can't let Michael discover the truth or find out what she was doing. Emily thinks quickly and comes up with a plan. She tells Michael that she is looking for a file related to Mercy's business dealing. Michael seems to buy it and offers to help her search. As they search through the archives, Emily tries to distract Michael from the truth, but Michael was getting closer to discovering her through identity. Meanwhile, James was getting impatient. He wants Emily to find his child quickly. He offers her a larger sum of money and threatens to harm her father if she doesn't deliver on time. Emily, I need result now. Find my child or face the consequences. I'm trying my best, James, but it's not easy. The family is hiding lots of secrets. I don't care what they are hiding. I just want my child and I want them now. Emily feels the pressure mounting. She has to find James' child before it's too late. Emily and Michael search, led them to a hidden safe in Mercy's old room. Inside, they find a birth certificate and a letter addressed to James. The birth certificate reveals that Mercy actually had a son with James. The letter reveals that Sarah, which is Michael's mother, forced Mercy to give up the child and disappear to save her family name. Michael was livid. He couldn't believe his mother could do such thing. Emily realizes that James' child is the key to uncovering the truth about Mercy's disappearance. She decided to confront Sarah. Sarah, I know what you did to Mercy. You forced Mercy to give up her child and disappear. Where is the child now? Who are you to interfere in Altamira business? Emily, you don't know what you are talking about. Mercy left on her own accord long time ago. I have proof, Sarah, and I'm going to find James' child no matter what it takes. You will never find that child. We will make sure of that. Emily stands her ground, determined to uncover the truth. Emily's determination only grows stronger. She enlists Michael's help to search for James' child. Together, they follow a trail of clues that led them to a shocking discovery. They found the child, now a grown man, living in secret. He reveals that Sarah had been paying him off to keep quiet about his true identity. Emily and Michael realize that they have uncovered a deep family secret. They know they have to be careful as Sarah will stop at nothing to keep the truth hidden. We have to tell James the truth. He deserves to know about his son, but we have to be very careful. My mother will do anything to keep this secret. 
I know, but we, but we can't let her win. We have to fight for the truth. I'm with you, Emily. Let's do this. Emily and Michael's courage puts them in grave danger. Would they be able to reveal the truth without getting hurt? Sit tight, guys. Let's see how this unravels. Not forgetting to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Emily and Michael come up with a plan to reveal the truth to James. They gather all the evidence they have and schedule a meeting with him. As they sat down with James, they revealed the shocking truth. James was stunned but also grateful to finally know the truth about his son. Thank you, Emily and Michael. You've given me a second chance at a relationship with my son. I won't let you down. But just as they think they've succeeded, Sarah stormed into the room, furious that their secret had been exposed. You will regret this, Emily. You will never be Clarita's daughter. You lied about your identity. You are an imposter and deserve to be arrested. Yes, you are just a fraud, pretending to be someone you are not. Emily stands her ground, refusing to back down. I may not be who I said I was, but I was raised right. I have done what is right. I will always stand by the truth. The battle between Emily and the Altamira family heats up. Sarah tried to discredit Emily, but she has the evidence to prove her claims. James stand by Emily's side, supporting her against the Altamira family. Michael also stood up for Emily, revealing that he has strong feelings for her. Sophia was so furious at the confession. She tries to attack Emily, but Michael intervenes, protecting her. In the case, Emily's true identity was revealed. She was not Mercy's friend, but a private investigator hired by James to find his son. The Altamira family was shocked, but Emily's bravery and determination have earned her their respect. Emily, you may not be family by blood, but you are a true friend. Thank you for bringing my son back to me. But where is Mercy? What happened to her? Sarah, seeing all the evidence stacked up against her, revealed that Mercy has been in a psychiatric home receiving treatment. She was heavily affected after giving birth. Sophia, still bitter, stormed out of the room. I'm just, I'm just glad the truth is out and I'm happy to have found a new family in you all, James and Michael. As they talk, Emily's phone rang. It was her father, John, calling to check up on her. Dad, I am so glad you called. I have so much to tell you. What is it, sweetie? You sound excited. I solved the case, Dad. I found James' son and the truth about Mercy's disappearance. That's amazing, Emily. I'm so proud of you. Emily shares the whole story with her father, including her feelings for Michael. I'm so happy for you, Emily. You deserve love and happiness. As Emily drives home, she reflects on the day's event. She feels proud of herself for solving the case and bringing James and his son together. The next day, Emily receives a call from James, inviting her to a family gathering to celebrate the reunion. She accepts and attends the event, feeling like part of the family. Mercy was present at the reunion with James' son. Sarah was taken by the police. The almighty Atamira family secret had been exposed. As she spent more time with Michael, their connection grew stronger. They share stories, laughter, and moments that Emily will treasure forever. James approached her with a smile, his eyes shining with gratitude. Emily, I want to thank you again for everything. You brought joy back to our family. It was my pleasure, sir. I'm just glad I could help. I have one more request. Will you be my guest at the annual Altamira Family Gala? It will mean a lot to me and my son. Emily accepts and James hands her a beautiful invitation with all the details. The night of the gala arrives and Emily was turning in a red gown, her hair perfectly styled. Michael was dashing in his tuxedo and they make a striking couple. As they dance and mingle, 
Emily feels like she's found her place in the world. She solved a mystery, brought a family together, and found love in the process. The evening ends with a fireworks display that lights up the sky. Emily and Michael watch, hands entwined, their hearts full of joy and promises. And so, Emily's adventure comes to full circle, a tale of mystery, family, and love that will stay with her forever. Thank you so much for watching. And this is a quick one. Do you think Emily deserves to be punished for faking her identity? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more amazing tales like this one. Till I see you again in my next story. Goodbye.